What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, Episode 8. Here we are to deliver a ton of value, ton of content, Amazon-related, entrepreneurial-related, mindset-related, business growth-related. Let's get into it. My name is Eric Castellano and you are on the Amazon Lit YouTube channel and we are bringing you that heat right now, bringing you that mindset change, that shift in perspective that will allow you to grow personally, physically and spiritually. That's where the game changing action happens because we all have goals in life. Right? I have goals, you have goals, you have dreams and aspirations, I have dreams and aspirations. But it's there's a huge disconnect from making a decision that you want to do something to actually taking action and doing that something. Right? I, there's a, a, a wonderful analogy I like to use. It's the four frog analogy. Three frogs, doesn't matter how many frogs, two frogs, many frogs you want, 20 frogs, right? Let's say there's 20 frogs on a log. One of those frogs makes a decision to jump off the log. How many frogs are on the log? There's still 20 frogs on the log because the, the, the one frog, he just made a decision. She just made a decision. They didn't take the action yet to actually jump off the log. So if you're just making decisions in the day to day, and you're not taking action, then your business is going to be stunted. Your growth is going to be stunted. Same thing. You can say you're going to get physically fit, but if you don't go to the gym, ain't shit gonna happen. You gotta take the action. You gotta put in the work. So same format as always. You should be used to this right now. What we do every single Sunday is we do a live Q&A where you can ask your questions about growing your business. What needs to be done, how you need to do it, who you need to get to do it, who you need to pay to do it for you, and how to scale. That's the topic here, how to scale your business. So we got some questions coming through here. What third party application do you use to control stock across different platforms, eBay, Amazon, etc.? Listing Mirror, I've had We've been using Listing Mirror for maybe three or four years. Uh, what I really like about it is the ease of use. It's very user friendly. You literally start the listing, preferably on Amazon, because it's the easiest to cross list on other marketplaces. Um, so you'd start the listing on Amazon and then it imports it into Listing Mirror. And then you literally just click a button. It lists it on eBay, lists it on Walmart, lists it on Jet. Um, it links to a couple other websites as well. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but it's really game changer because nobody likes creating listings on eBay. I personally don't like creating listings on eBay. I think it's ridiculous and super tedious. That's why I love Amazon so much. It's just so easy. The listing exists already. You just copy paste the ASIN and to add a product, bickety bam, just like that. Game changer. When you use your repricer, how do you calculate your minimum and maximum prices and how do you know which approach to take such as aggressiveness. So this gentleman or a woman's question, FBA James, I'm gonna say gentleman, this gentleman's question is, how do we decide um, to choose our floor price and our ceiling price in our repricer? So I'll answer the easiest one first, the floor price. The floor price, we pick a minimum that we're willing to take. Early on in our business, we set our floor price, I'm talking year one, year two, year three, we set our floor price to three and a half percent. This allowed us to move massive amounts of volume. Now that's not saying that your product will be listed at three and a half percent, but that's saying you're willing to go down all the way to three and a half percent, or we were willing to go down all the way to three and a half percent. And the reason why we did that is because we didn't want to miss sale opportunities. So instead of setting it at 15%, and then all of a sudden you have a listing that should be at 7%. And now for two, three, four weeks go by, you're not making any sales because you're stuck at 15% instead of it transferring it to 7% because you didn't have your floor price set low enough. So early on, we like to have our floor price set at 3.5%. Then maybe year three, we bumped it up to 5%, then 7.5%. And now our floor price is at 15%. But that came through years of trial and tribulation. And still, even today, for certain SKUs, certain ASINs, we make exceptions in that 15% minimum floor price. And sometimes we'll drop it to 12 or 8, depending on the keep a chart. Now, for the floor price, there's no set equation that we use or you should use to be setting your ceiling price. Your ceiling price 
should be used or placed by using the data that comes from the keeper chart, right? What is the highest price that's been listed at? What's its consistent price? How many competitive sellers are on it? How much inventory they have? Because you don't want to use an equation because let's just say you say 20% over, right? 20% over the listed price. But the listed price right now is a little low and 20% is actually like the normal buy box price. You're missing out on money. Let's say 20%, it's a $100 product. Now you're talking 120 bucks. Now you might get a potential high pricing error. You might get price gouging. It's just, there's no standard. We literally manually reprice all of our ceiling prices based on what we think and how we think the listing will perform. It's game changer, my friends. How do you know which approach to take such as aggressiveness? Yeah, so I answered that. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's a it's a set standard formula we use for our entire company. So the floor price is 95% of the time the same and the ceiling price is based on the listing. Does the place you live determine the volume of sales in your business? Does it make any difference in New York City or Las Vegas, for example? No, it will not. It will not make a difference. The only thing that, so they do use location for uh, buy box priority. So let's just say hypothetically, we got two people. We got Stacy and John, right? Stacy has most of her inventory in West Coast Amazon Fulfillment Centers. And John has most of his inventory in Midwest and East Coast Fulfillment Centers. If someone's ordering something from Florida, Amazon's most likely going to give John the buy box because his inventory is closer to Florida when Stacy's inventory is all the way in the West Coast. So for them to ship something from Washington State or California to Florida will be very expensive to them, right? But there's so many shoppers on Amazon that it doesn't really matter where your inventory is. Also, on average, most sellers' inventory is split between 12 to 14 fulfillment centers nationwide. So the customers can have access to your products all of the time. So where your business is physically located when you're selling on Amazon will not affect the amount of sales you can produce. Where are y'all meeting up in Orlando on the 7th? So for anybody who doesn't know, on April 7th, we'll be in Orlando. This gentleman just asked where it will be. I don't have the location to disclose to you yet, but as soon as I have it, you will be the first to know. You can check it out on Instagram. It will be here on YouTube. We'll be talking about it. It's going to be a bunch of people hanging out, networking, getting to know each other, eating some food, drinking some drinks, just kicking it talking about business growth, everything that we're talking about here, except in person, super excited about it. And then on the 9th, we're doing a meetup, April 9th this is, we're doing a meetup in Miami. That is a Friday evening. It's probably gonna start around five or six o'clock. Same thing, a little more low key, laid back, we're gonna do a little Q&A, open forum motivation session at the Wizards of Ecom down in Miami. And then we're gonna go hit the town and kick it. And then Saturday at 1 p.m., there is a formal meetup, right? It's gonna be, right now, 50 people are already signed up. It's gonna be lit, if you ask me. Um, I'm trying to get the space to bump it up to allow us to have 100 people. It's gonna be fucking crazy. But we'd love to have you there as well. So April 7th in Orlando, April 9th in Miami, April 10th in Miami, see you there. And just hit the gram. We'll be posting all the, the dates and the exact locations on the gram. Hello, sir. I wanna do one step more to scale my Amazon business. What's for you the best step to go forward in Amazon? Reinvest all your money back into your Amazon business, especially if you have an, another job. If you're not using the money you're making on Amazon to literally survive, like I'm talking put food on your table, pay your phone bills, put gas in your car, pay off your student debt, whatever it is, literally survive. If you're not using that money to survive, it should all be going back into your business, all of it every single penny for at least a year because you're going to be able to scale much faster. And when you scale faster, it means a few things, more customer reviews, more cash flow, more respect on Amazon. Amazon considers that. How long you've been selling? How much inventory are you selling? How many customers? How many orders are you shipping? They consider that when they're allocating the buy box. So reinvest, 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 reinvest. All the money back to the Amazon business initially, and then start taking profits. How can I start FBA? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to our Instagram bio. In that bio, there's a link, you click on that link. Then there's another link, it says Amazon Beginners Bundle. You're gonna click on that, you're gonna purchase it, it's very cheap. Use promo code CLUBHOUSE in all capitals. It's $99, literally nothing. 
You purchase that, you watch every single video, and you do what it says. Step by step, create an account, register a business, start purchasing inventory, how to ship it, how to package it, all that. You do it, right? And then when your business starts to grow, you report back to us and you let us know how it's going, and then we'll help you get to the next level. Another listing mirror question. So the reason why I like, we've tried a lot of cross-listing um, inventory management systems. The reason why I like listing mirror so much is because when you sell, let's say you put 100 units, right? 100 units and you have it listed on Walmart, eBay, and Amazon. When you sell one on Amazon, it deducts the quantity for all of them to say 99. And then if you sell five, it will say uh, 94. So it's, it's really great as far as tracking inventory across all the different marketplaces where it's removing them as you sell them. So you're not selling the same unit in multiple marketplaces at the same time running out of inventory to ship. I have seven invites for Clubhouse. Catch me on the back channels. <laughs> no way, I have seven invites as well. That's crazy. So if anybody needs an invite for Clubhouse, you heard it here, reach out to Emerald Avenue Shop or myself. I got a bunch of them as well. Be happy to provide them to you. Just DM me your iPhone number. This is from the king of online sales. That is a bold statement, my friend. Um, he's doing pretty well on Amazon, but how do I kill it with luxury items besides StockX and Real Real? Listen, luxury items. That you know, StockX is a great is a great opportunity for luxury items. If you could get the thing, Amazon's not the place to do that. Bottom line, Amazon is not the place to do that. eBay is not the place to do that. Um, a great place for luxury items, Shopify store. A, because you're not paying ridiculous fees. You know, 15% on a $200 product is 30 bucks that Amazon's keeping. Um, I'm not sure what stock rec, StockX referral fees are. But listen, I, I don't really fuck with luxury items only because if you get a couple of returns, it eats your profits so quickly. You know, but if luxury items are your thing, I would encourage you Shopify. Shopify would be the way to go. Uh, why did you choose wholesale versus private label? We didn't, we do both. Our business is 85% wholesale, 15% private label. Uh, Brian 5X said, hello, Eric. What is the best method to send pallets of hazmat to FBA? The regular shipping method, it's way too expensive. Uh, we use a third party carrier for our shipments to FBA. So we use a broker. Um, we go into their site, we input all the information, they give us a bunch of quotes, and then we pick the quickest, not always the least expensive, but the quickest. And right now our average cost per unit, I don't know why people do pounds. Just if you're still doing pounds when you're doing your shipping calculation, it makes no logical sense to do pounds. Because let's say you're selling, let's say you're shipping um, a mini fridge that weighs 10 pounds and on the same pallet, you're shipping a hair tie that weighs two ounces. It, the, the, the pounds doesn't matter. Why are we still using pounds when we're analyzing shipping calculations for Amazon outgoing goods? It just doesn't make logical sense. It should be per item. What is it costing me per item to get this unit to Amazon? That is the metric you should be using. I mean, right now our average hazmat shipment costs right around 55 cents per item, per ASIN, per bundled packaged ASIN, right around 55 cents. When our regular FBA products are right around three and a half cents per item to get to Amazon. So that is, you know, 15% higher. When will FBA come to Bosnia? How could I find suppliers in my country? Uh, I'm not sure when FBA will come to Bosnia, um, but where to find suppliers in your country? Um, there's, a, there's a YouTube video right here, which you can use um, to find suppliers and also Google, just start Googling them. Google, 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 Google is your friend when you're trying to find wholesalers and distributors. Um, wholesalers, beauty wholesalers, Bosnia, toy distributors, Bosnia. You'll get some leads. Also, what I like to do, this is a little nugget for everybody. Um, sometimes Sebastian and I, we like to just go to industrial areas, drive around, start knocking on doors, walking in businesses. Um, it's been successful. You know, it's a little time consuming, but you get one great account out of it grow one great relationship. And the beautiful thing is you're meeting these people in person. I always stress the importance of building relationships and what better way than to literally walk into their building and be like, hey, I'm E. I'm looking to purchase some inventory. I see you have this, this, and this because I can see you in your warehouse. I'd like to get that. 
Let's make it happen. Here's my business card. Let's sit down. Oh, you got five minutes? Let's chat now. Oh, you want me to give you, you want, you want to give me a tour of your warehouse? No way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's take a tour of the warehouse. Let's see what other products you get. Oh, I can place a PO right here, right on the spot. How much is this? You're going to give me this Texas Pete for $2? I'll take 400 of them right now, right now. My driver will be here in two hours to pick it up. Amazon bruh said, what do we use to scan price lists? from supplier scan unlimited and at the bottom of this video there's going to be a 50 percent discount code so click it try it out if you like it you like it if not you don't use it but that's what we use can you please share some tips to get brand approval we want to share you the most basic tip that works 97 percent of the time so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to call up a manufacturer or a distributor or a brand doesn't matter most likely a distributor or a wholesaler. Those are usually the easiest to get in contact with. So you're gonna create an account, then you're gonna scrape their file and you're gonna purchase some products, right? 90% of the products you're gonna purchase are per products that you're approved for, that you can sell already, right? And then you're gonna add the other 10% will be a case of this, a case of that. And the reason why I say a case is most products, not all, but most products come case back in 12. And one of the requirements for approvals and on gating is an invoice with at least 10 units from a reputable wholesaler or distributor. So you purchase one case of this and another case of that and another case of that. And now you have this invoice and then you would submit that invoice to Amazon. And then when you get approved, you can ship it to Amazon fulfillment centers. And now worst case scenario, the reason why I say just buy the one case, if you don't get approved, let's say it was $3 a unit, you got one case at, at 12 units, it's 36 bucks. If it's mouthwash, keep it in the house, use it. Hand it out to some friends, you know? If it's a pair of shoes, you got an extra pair of shoes, give them to your friends. Um, but that's the best way, the easiest way. All right, this guy is learning to really start RA and can't wait to learn and transfer from RA to wholesale, amazing. I remember those exciting times. That was a like super exciting time for us. We were able to literally grow sales 10X when we made the transfer from retail arbitrage to wholesale. Don't get me wrong, listen. I'm, bu I'm by no means bashing retail arbitrage. We literally built our foundation of our company off of retail arbitrage. But what would I, I would encourage to anybody here listening to this to consider making the transition to wholesale. Imagine, just imagine a world, right? Where you used to go to Walmart or TJ Maxx or Target and you would find this product and you'd clear out the shelf and get 18 units and you'd be so pumped up and, and then you put them in your trunk and you go home and then you package them and you ship them to Amazon and they sell in 17 minutes and then you gotta do it all over again. Imagine a world or instead of purchasing 18 units at once, you can purchase 700, maybe even 900, maybe even 1800 units with the click of a mouth, the pickup of a phone. Fucking legendary. That's what I'm talking about. That's where the growth happened. How much monthly spend should you hit with a supplier before asking for a volume discount? I don't know if it's really, that's not something, I, we really do it orders. Right, so, and I guess there needs to be some spend in there. And I guess the best way to explain it is an example, right? So we've been doing business with this company. Uh, we just brought on a new buyer. Let me pre-frame this story. So we just brought on a new buyer about three weeks ago. Her name's Shannon. She's lovely. She's phenomenal. I'm super impressed. She used our training course, eSellers RI. We use that to train her. And she is way farther advanced than any other buyer that we've ever brought on in their first three weeks. So that's amazing. I was managing this company for the past six months. I probably placed maybe six orders with them. Average orders, maybe six to $8,000. So we spent like maybe 35 to $40,000 with them. And I never requested discounts. And now she took over that vendor and she's like, hey, I'm gonna request some discounts. I was like, you know what? We spent about 30,000, maybe 40,000 with them. You should probably, let's do it. Let's request some discounts. So I was excited about it. She literally came in my office this morning and she said, Eric, you're not gonna believe it. Some of the products, they gave me 13% discounts. Other products, they gave me 7% discounts. She's like, I'm so excited. And I was like, I am as well. This is amazing, right? So I would say once you cross, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in spend, you can really start requesting discounts. And listen, if the products aren't working out from the rip, then request a discount right away. The reason why I don't like to lead with the discount is because it just decredits you. 
Like it's it's just like I don't want to be that needy person who's just like I need I need a discount. I didn't spend any money with you yet, but I need a discount. It's like no, I'm willing to invest in the relationship. I don't mind putting up twenty, thirty grand, or or in a smaller sense, let's say three to five grand. I don't mind putting up to three to five grand at twelve percent margins, even eight percent margins initially to grow the relationship and harvest it. It's like taking care of a plant. You gotta water that shit, right? You gotta put it in the sunlight. Maybe even whisper sweet somethings into its little leaves. Or you got to build it up. Let it know you care. It's the same thing when you're growing a relationship with the wholesaler and distributor. I probably have exhausted the topic of relationships because I talk about them so much because they've been such a value to us. They've literally allowed our business to skyrocket and they'll allow your business to skyrocket too if you build them. All right, so this person asked, how do you handle breaking map policy? So what map pricing is, is minimum advertised price, MAP. What brands will do is they will set a map pricing on their products and say, hey, we'll take it back to this hot sauce. This hot sauce, you can't sell less than $8.99, right? That is the minimum I want you to be able to list this hot sauce on Amazon for. Right, and then what happens is if you break that $8.99, they'll send you an email and they'll say, hey, you're listed at 847 you've been here for two days um can you please raise your price up back to 899 we get those emails a lot and you probably get them as well and what we'll do is we'll raise our price back to 899 because the company asked we want to keep a relationship with the company whether we bought it directly from them or we just purchased from a wholesaler it doesn't matter initially you want to make the company happy you don't want them causing you problems submitting ip complaints getting back and forth with the emails just do it. It's simple, simple request, right? But where we make a decision to go below map pricing is when there's a few other sellers who aren't abiding by map pricing. And if we do not go below the map price, we will never sell the inventory. And it's usually about 60 days. Well, I don't mind holding a skew for 60 days to see if the listing levels back out. Right. Let's say a bunch of sellers jumped on this and instead of being at eight ninety nine, which is the map price, they jump in at seven ninety nine and they're there for five weeks. I don't mind holding off the five weeks because I want to continue to sell this product. I want the brand to be like, remember Eric and Amazon Lit? When he sold our hot sauce, he abided by map pricing. Let's get him as authentic third party distributor for our company. He's the guy I want to talk to. Let's get him on the phone because he knows what he's doing. He treats our company the way we want it to be treated. Um, but when we make a decision to go below map is let's say six weeks goes by, eight weeks goes by, still making no sales. Now, instead of four sellers breaking map, there's eight sellers breaking map. Nobody cares anymore. It's just a free for all. We'll break map pricing. When the company emails us, we'll tell them like, listen, we've been holding your inventory for six weeks. We haven't sold any units. There's seven other sellers below map pricing. So we're going to continue to break map pricing or you can buy the inventory back from us. I'll pull it all back from Amazon and you can buy it back from us. I'll ship it to your house or to your warehouse, wherever you want it. You can buy it back from us, but I'm not abiding by your map policy anymore because I'm in the business of making money and selling your product at your map price is not making me money because nobody else is selling it at that price. So you need to manage your brand a little better. Now you'd say it a little more eloquently than that, but that's the gist of it. Someone's making breaking map. We let it ride until we can no longer let it run. Don't worry, if your question didn't get answered, you can find me here every single Sunday on YouTube doing Sunday sessions. This is episode eight. Next week will be episode nine. And we're just delivering that heat every single week. So we'd love to have you back. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me here. Super grateful to have all of you. I look forward to meeting you, a lot of you down in Miami in a couple weeks. Look forward to it. Keep an eye on the socials for the deets. And we'll see you there. Everybody have a beautiful week. Stay blessed, stay grateful, and stay lit.